What's up, YouTube? Ryan Panny here. Hope you guys are doing reasonably well. Time for a quick little music industry discussion here in which I will hopefully bring a somewhat unique perspective to a severely well-worn topic, which is the topic of how streaming services have changed the music industry. My simple argument that I wanna make here is that the rise of streaming services, especially in the last four years, has caused the consumer focus in the music industry to shift back to albums rather than songs. And for all this talk about streaming services killing the music industry, actually their widespread adoption by consumers has caused the pendulum to sort of swing back closer to where it was at the end of the late 20th century. So the first thing to note here is that while streaming certainly did not kill the music business, one thing that it really did kill, and I mean brutally slaughter and maim, is the format of digital downloads. Music being purchased digitally on the iTunes store or, or God forbid you still purchase music from like Yahoo Music or one of these outlets. Digital downloads fell 25% in 2016 and another 25% in 2017, just for some numbers sake. That is like 2008 stock market level shit. Which relative to streaming, that makes perfect sense, right? I mean, if you're gonna listen to music digitally and your music is just gonna exist somewhere up in the cloud, you could either pay 10 bucks a month or five bucks a month if you're a student for every song ever, or you could buy a Post Malone song for 129 or whatever the price is now. Streaming relative to digital downloads, digital purchases, is like color television if color television were also way cheaper and more cost effective than black and white television. It's just kind of a no brainer for consumers. And because of that fucking plummeting of digital downloads, we're now at the point for the first time in almost 10 years where actual CDs and vinyls are outselling digital downloads. It turns out that streaming has had virtually no impact on the audio files and the record collectors. It's just that middle ground here that's just been kind of cut out. And with this death of the format of digital downloads, where you see this play out is there are big artists, I mean, this is like now, I guess a year old example, but Future, perfect example, Beast Mode 2. That's an example of a streaming only project. The only way you can consume that is to stream it. It's not available to buy anywhere. No physical, not even digital versions of it. You can just stream it. Future is one of the biggest artists in the world and he is not only eschewing physical sales, but digital ones. They're just pointless, at least for the audience that he's trying to reach. Now, the issue of physical music is a little bit different because that's where it starts to really vary genre to genre. Evidently, hip hop heads who like Future don't give a shit about having a CD with Future's music on it. But you talk to, you know, hipsters in urban areas or metalheads, metalheads are a great example. And things are a lot different. Like Brian Slagle, the CEO of Metal Blade has talked extensively about how physical sales are still a enormous portion of Metal Blade's revenue. So that part of it, the physical part of it does vary genre to genre. However, getting back to the crux of this video, which is how streaming has affected the album experience. Now there's a term and I forget where I first heard it. I, it had to be something involving a Drake release, probably views or more life, something around there. And the term is for an album being optimized for streaming, meaning the business strategy behind the release of an album or a project is meant to specifically target the way music fans consume via streaming. Namely, that these albums are actually deliberately longer, which is a mind fuck of a concept when you consider the issue of short attention spans that we're constantly on about in today's society. There's a great interview with David Turner, who's a journalist, he writes for Pitchfork, Rolling Stone, etc., where he sort of breaks this down. I wanna read a quick passage from it. Now that streaming has become the main way of revenue for the music industry overall, albums are becoming longer. Drake's album had 25 songs, Migos' Culture 2 had almost 30 songs, which is less so an album than it's sort of a playlist or a collection of tracks. Even if you were to talk to those artists, I don't think they would say that you are meant to listen to it all the way through. It's just sort of a collection of songs that can get the most streams eventually. What a world. I mean, here we are, or here we were, back in the iTunes age, worrying that the increasingly short attention spans of consumers means that a 40 minute album length project isn't necessary anymore. And now fast forward to 2019, and here we are deliberately making albums longer. But it makes sense. I mean, Drake literally called More Life a playlist for this exact reason. When you purchase a CD, you're purchasing a CD for $18, regardless of how many songs are on it, which actually used to really fucking annoy me. Because if you buy like an Iron Maiden album from the 80s, there are eight songs on it and two of them you've heard a million times. Or you could buy like a, like a 50 cent album or something and it's got like 21 songs, including the interludes and the skits. But since everyone's paying the same exact $10 a month now for just everything, you might as well put more songs on your album so it statistically gets more streams. 
And now that streaming is being incorporated into album sales, it matters for selling your tickets and all kinds of shit. For hip hop especially, your feature price. It's just so weird, because here we are, like circling back to the 1970s where double albums were all the rage. Where we're back in like double album territory. So that right there is the artist's perspective from a monetization angle as to why artists are caring more about albums now. And I think from a fan's perspective, obviously frugality and cost effectiveness are one of the key factors leading us to care more about albums now. Because no one's paying more to listen to a whole album. We're all paying the same $10 a month, so you, there's no downside to sitting down with a complete body of work and enjoying it how it's meant to be enjoyed rather than in incomplete and non-sequential pieces, you know? So here's a quick little personal story from years ago that I don't know why it popped into my head, but it popped into my head and it gave me this whole realization and made me want to make this video. So back when I was 14, I was obsessed with metal in general, but I was especially the most hardcore Trivium fan amongst my friends at the time. And I remember one day we're hanging out at my buddy's house and I mentioned the fact that in my opinion, the band's debut album, Ember to Inferno, is incredibly underrated. Everyone gets all excited. He's like, yeah, I totally agree, whatever, whatever. Puts, at the time, <laughs> his iPod into an iHome and presses play. And what comes through the speakers is da 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 I'm sitting there like, wait, 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 wait. What song is this? Have I, is this on Ember to Inferno? Have I heard this before? Me, the hardcore fan of this band, right? Turns out it's a song called To Burn the Eye. It's the eighth track on the album. It comes in the track list right after the title track. And me having for like a year at that point been cobbling together, you know, an iTunes download here, a LimeWire download there, I hadn't even heard the whole fucking record. The song quickly became one of my favorites from the whole record. I mean, it, again, it sits in the track list right after the title track. It's not like buried in the end. And I had no idea it existed. See, that would never happen in 2019. Albums come out, we all listen to the whole thing at the same time. There's no reason not to, and everyone's on the same page. And it is the greatest time to consume music ever in the history of the world, period. And the cherry on top is, while we all sit here and, and freak out about getting too advanced for our own good, here we are and we've quietly gone back to an album-driven music culture. And it's beautiful. The exception being SoundCloud and Lil Pump, but we'll save that for a different video. Anyway, what do you guys think about how streaming has affected the concept of an album? Are music fans in 2019 more or less concerned with the quality of a full body of work as opposed to individual songs? Let me know in the comments. It's definitely a fascinating topic that I have a funny feeling we're gonna have to keep revisiting as the music industry and the world at large continues to evolve and change at an increasingly rapid pace. And as always, thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video and are not yet subscribe to my channel, please consider doing so by clicking right over here, as well as checking out any of the other music related content that I publish here on a weekly basis. Really appreciate you watching, liking, disliking, commenting, just interacting in any fashion. Twitter, Instagram handle at Ryan Panty Music. Again, thank you so much for watching guys, and I will see you soon.